Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the sale box for the 30th of December 2014. My name is Total Biscuit, rounding up today's Steam deals. If you happen to miss the deals from yesterday, they are still available, so do go and check out the video that I put out yesterday on that subject. Let's begin, shall we, with The Witcher 2, 85% off. I'm always surprised by how deep the discounts are for games of this quality. Hey, this is a AAA quality RPG and you're seeing it discounted down to the price of a large packet of crisps. It's a little bit ridiculous. If you don't already own Witcher 2, I really don't see why, unless you're someone that just doesn't like RPGs. It's a game that got significant content support after the fact. It's a game that had its performance issues on launch very much fixed, and it's got a great narrative, awesome world to explore, fantastic questing, and in my opinion, a good combat system. Some people don't really like it. I think it's actually quite nice because it relies quite a lot on preparation, which is perhaps something that you don't really get from most of the more third-person action RPG style combat systems. Yeah, I mean, Witcher 2 is a great time sink. It's an absolutely amazing game. And for $3? I mean, come on! Why would you not? Wasteland 2, 50% off. I love Wasteland 2 because it's a reminder of days gone by, and it's a well-implemented CRPG in the classic style. It's got nice questing variety, it's got a cool overworld to explore, it's got a lot of very interesting weapons and equipment to find, which is always one of the most fun parts of post-apocalyptic games in my opinion, scavenging and seeing what you can come up with. I recall quite early on in the game getting a really awesome gun and realizing that I'm not going to be able to find ammunition for this damn thing anywhere. The character development skill system is very solid. What I really like is the dialogue system of the game, which actually allows you to type in words which can unlock new dialogue options. So. If you read what the person is actually saying and think, well, there's not a question on the list, then you can type in the word that would be associated with that question, and maybe there is a hidden dialogue option. That's a, just a very old school way of doing things. It's very reminiscent of the original Wasteland from the 80s. It's not the best looker. I mean, it's not even close to being the best looker. And the combat system is occasionally a little bit clunky and not exactly innovative, but this game reminds me a hell of a lot of Fallout 2, and that, to me, is a very good thing indeed. Armor 3, 50% off. A demanding game, to say the least. Difficult to run on maximum detail. It's an extremely intensive game because it's simulating a very large world and a hell of a lot of stuff going on with it. It's actually gorgeous if you can crank it up, but few people actually can. It is a military simulator. It does now have a single player campaign, which is worth playing, but the meat of the game is in the multiplayer, and usually that will involve getting a group to play with who is tolerant of teaching you. That could be a little bit difficult. It has a huge amount of complexity and depth behind it, though. There are very few games that actually simulate both weapons and military equipment as well as armor does. It is the quintessential military simulator on PC, and if you are willing to put up with the learning curve associated with that, then there are very few experiences like it. Lethal League, 50% off. It's hard to describe this game. It considers itself a competitive projectile fighting game. That's probably pretty accurate. It's a very aggressive game of tennis, let me put it that way. So you have a ball, and when you hit the ball, it changes to your color. And if it makes contact with an enemy, they lose. They die instantly. But of course, they have ways of hitting the ball back to you. And the aim is to accelerate the ball to ludicrous speeds and attempt to use special moves and cancels in order to beat your opponent. It's a really intriguing spin on a fighting game. And despite the fact that I don't really like the visuals all that much, the game is ridiculous fun and supports up to four players simultaneously. It also has good online play, few issues here and there with the netco, but for the most part it's very, very solid. Yeah, you should be trying out Lethal League if you want something that takes an interpretation of fighting games, boils it down to a bare minimum, kind of like Dive Kick, and then builds it back up again with some really odd ideas. And it works somehow, it really gels together quite nicely, plus the soundtrack is killer. Lichdom Battle Mage, 75% off. Ah, right, okay, so that's at a price point where it's a bit easier to recommend. I didn't hate Lichdom Battle Mage, I thought it had some really cool ideas, it was a good looking game, it allowed you to throw all sorts of interesting and wonderful spells. Although the crafting system, and as a result, the variety of spells that you have, was overly obsessed with tiny details and tweaking as opposed to anything else. Like, this is a statmonger's dream. If you like tweaking things to your exact specifications, then the crafting system of Battle Mage allowed you to do that. If you like looking at stats, page after page of bloody stats, then Battle Mage has got that in spades. But I think the system would have probably worked a little better if they'd simplified it 
and concentrated on making each modifier much more obvious and making it more effectual and really change the nature of the spell. And they don't necessarily do that all that well. But if you can get past that, then Lichten Battle Mage is a pretty enjoyable first-person shooter that focuses on using magic to kill your opponents as opposed to actual weapons. It's certainly got its problems, it's a little bit linear, it's definitely no... Skyrim, if people thought that it was, it might look a little bit like Skyrim, but no, I mean, the level of exploration simply is not there. It's not an open world, and some of the boss fights are questionable in terms of design, let's put it that way. But for that price, it's worth a bash. The Forest, 33% off. It's an early access game. You know exactly what I'm going to say. But the forest is looking very promising. Once this thing comes out, it might really be a very, very good survival game. It's getting there. It's really quite stunning in terms of its visuals, surprisingly so, and the AI is surprisingly good as well. It's one of the entries into this burgeoning genre of survival games that find themselves in early access that's looking like it might actually see the light of day and be good when it comes out. It's probably worth playing right now if you're into survival. And most of the survival games available are in fact in early access. That's just the reality of it. This game is frequently updated and appears to be in the hands of competent developers, so that's good. It seems like this is the kind of thing that you would want to try if you are desperate to engage in the survival genre, because it's certainly one of the better ones available in early access. Child of Light, 60% off. Well, I attest to not really liking this game all that much. Yes, it's aesthetically impressive, but it has too many problems for me to really recommend it. It really seems like the sort of game that should be played with a parent and child. The entire dialogue of the game is done in rhymes, and if it was done particularly well, perhaps I wouldn't have as many problems with it, but it's not. It's really quite cringeworthy, and I found the writing to be obnoxious. The battle system is not too bad. It's a simplified JRPG sort of active time battle system, which works reasonably well, but the game is critically lacking in character custom customization and depth in terms of its combat mechanics. I didn't find the exploration of the world to be too enjoyable either, again as a result of not really meeting interesting characters because the writing just isn't very good. So this is not a strong recommendation, is it? And rightfully so, I'm afraid. It does have this nice little co-op element that, again, you could play with your kid where the child controls the small little wisp or indeed you reverse it around and you play the wisp to help out the main character. But I didn't really like Child of Light, I'm afraid. I'm sorry. Final Fantasy VII, 50% off. I'm not going to go into my opinion on Final Fantasy VII, come on. I mean, really, I didn't even finish the damn game. I played it very late, of course, because I never owned a PlayStation 1 back in the day. I owned a Saturn, so never played Final Fantasy VII when it was relevant. And I suppose it remains relevant to this very day if you play it on PC. And of course, it's a classic JRPG. And there are various mods that you can get for the version that will actually help it out and make it look a little bit better. I've got to say that Square Enix continues its history of porting games to other platforms, old ones in particular, that are frankly just not particularly good upgrades. It really seems like an excuse to just not remaster the damn thing, which is what people have been asking for for ages, but it's it's Final Fantasy VII. The thing is that you have to log into your Square Enix account in order to actually play the game in the first place, which can cause a bunch of problems, and it doesn't interact well with the keyboard and mouse. If you want to do a good PC port for this damn thing, you'd make the combat engine mouse controlled. It makes sense. I mean, it's just menus. Why would it not be mouse controlled? Oh yes, that's because it's a lazy port. That's why it's not mouse controlled. Control. And finally, Metal Slug 3, 70% off. Uh, um, all right then, I suppose. <laughs> That's a little bit of an odd choice, but Metal Slug's a classic. It's absolutely wonderful. But, same complaint kind of as Final Fantasy 7. Not a great port, really. Nothing to really write home about. The sort of thing that you could easily play on an emulator, admittedly, since it's available for next to nothing on... PC, there's probably no excuse to play it on an emulator as opposed to just buying the PC version. It's fine. The problem I've got with it is that the online system is not perfect. It's got a lot of disconnection problems. So if you want to play co-op with somebody, then you might run into issues from time to time. It is by no means impeccable. Outside of that, Metal Slug is a classic side-scroller with a timeless art style that I enjoy very much. All right, folks, that is me done for the day. Thank you very much for watching the Sailbox, and I will see you next time.